here we go. So a slight lag, maybe. Anyway, in 3D Avengers for Endgame Thoughts film. I'm going to get into a... Let me start over. Before I get into any spoilers at all, and I am going to get into every single spoiler for this movie, before I do that, for those who started this video, not... If you haven't watched the movie yet, let me just briefly say, I had huge expectations. I basically thought there was no way this movie could possibly live up to my expectations, and it exceeded every single one of them. This movie has amazing action, amazing exploration of character, amazing fan service. The, it's worth the entire three hours, and you really feel like it's, you know, it delivers on the, you know, this 10 years in the making, you know, yeah, 11 years by now. You know, it really, if, if there's at all any, you know, last, last I checked, it was like 110 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and only four of them were rotten. Maybe the, that'll change, but I, I haven't, you know, that was like, I don't know, an hour, two hours ago, whatever. This movie, in my personal opinion, is amazing. And if at all you're, like, on the fence, yes, watch it. it it's, yeah. Now, I think I'm going to dive into the spoilers. So, yeah, the, the, yeah, let me just, I wrote a whole thing, but I wrote it like a couple of days ago. So, yeah, let me just read, yeah. Okay, when I put up this, when I put this video up, this movie will not have premiered everywhere in the world yet. So I want to make it absolutely clear, this movie is going to be full of spoilers. Video is going to be full of spoilers. Well, the movie is too, to be fair. The movie spoils itself. Completely. I recorded this video after watching the entire movie, and the idea is that you watch this video after watching the entire movie. I don't want to spoil this movie for anyone. So please, if you haven't watched the movie yet, stop watching this video right now. Come back after, you know, I'd appreciate it. If you're gonna watch the rest of this video, don't do so until after watching the, the movie, is what I'm trying to say. And yeah, so yeah. And this is gonna be a long video, but there are time codes for different sections in the description box. I, I try to be completely like just detached, and you know, when I when I do the the what I call the my own film critic rating for this. But yeah, it's a 10 out of 10. And my personal rating is also 10 out of 10. And it's the only reason it's only a 10 is because it can't go any higher. So, let's get right into, now starting with the 3D. It's, it's excellent, there's depth, it's, it's incredible in the action scenes and just, yeah, you know, if, if again, if, if I'm catching anyone who hasn't bought their ticket yet and are like, excuse me, on the fence, yes, the 3D is worth it, definitely. Excuse me. Now, notes taken while watching. Whenever I go to a Marvel movie, I bring not one, but two pads that I can put notes on. For this one, I almost needed a third. Almost no movie that isn't an MCU movie even requires more than one, but this one required all of two. I wrote stuff on the, the back, the cardboard back here. Sometimes I would put like stuff you know, both on this side of the paper and this side, and just, yeah. And I gotta be honest, a couple of these are gonna be out of order because, you know, yeah, as the movie was ending, I was running completely out. And, yeah. By the way, when I record this, 
usually... I watched this very early. I watched a 10 o'clock screening here. So... Where usually when I do one of these on a current movie, I will have eaten dinner before I start recording. That wasn't the case this time. And usually... Yeah. In just under two hours is when I usually eat and someone might be coming by so what I'm most likely just gonna do is end this current video and just start another stream after eating and I have no so if, so if it says like part one of two up there that's why and if this video is more than two hours, then very likely it's because it just combined them. I, it doesn't always... Yeah. I, I don't always know which of those it's going to do. So yeah, this, uh, this is going to have to be the, the very first note. The, while the climax is huge, it focuses on a single element, and because of that, it doesn't just become visual noise. You know, yeah, there's a million things going on all over the screen, but you're focusing here because that's where the specific, you know, here in the, in the climax, it's them trying to get the gauntlet away from Thanos, and Thanos trying to get the gauntlet. You know, Infinity War, it's the... the yeah, actually, Infinity, Inf Infinity War's climax doesn't really have a specific... I, I guess it's... You're, you're focusing on the characters th that you know and you hope that they'll live, but... I mean, it's not the first time... I mean, I guess sort of the... The, the first Avengers sort of does it with the, the scepter. But yeah, in this, it's the, it's the goal. I, th I think that's an uh, excellent idea. I... I the, the thing is, we've gotten to this point where we have the technology to make just completely huge action and, you know, there, there was a while where it would just be visual noise. And now we've gotten to the point where, and that's, I, I don't know, maybe it's only the MCU. I don't, I don't really watch any other action movies, I'll admit. Other than, you know, Mission Impossible and, you know, I've been watching Mission Impossible since... Did I watch? Did I start watching in '96? I I might have. I'm not until what? No, no, I did not. But I have been watching it for a lot of years. You know, I've I've watched them in the movie theater since 2006. So I when when a new one comes out, I do tend to go to the theater and record a video on that. But yeah, I'm I'm glad that we are. I I don't think the MCU really has failed in that regard. I feel like every action scene, you can, there is something, you know, it, it never gets just, I, I feel like maybe the climax of Aquaman almost got there, but, you know, you're basically focusing on the characters you knew and wanted to live, but, yeah. And uh, just, yeah, I, I didn't write it down anywhere, and it's, it's not, it's not, Difficult for me to remember, not that everything I've written down is. The climax of this movie is what the, cli the, the not the climax, but the big, you know, the huge action scene early in Justice League want it to be. You know, it has all these callbacks, it has all these little nods to earlier stuff. Yeah, you know, that one, it definitely has stuff. If you've read the comics, it's like, oh yeah, that's, you know, but... If not, you know, yeah, this one is, is so much, yeah. Anyway, I sh yeah, I should just briefly say if, the, you know, if you're watching this, if you're new to my videos, well, if you're watching this, you, then you can hear what I'm about to say. But if you're new to my videos, I'm not going to, like, I know, like, it's, does, does Bruni even do videos where just vlogs? Anyway. Someone like Spoony will like lay the groundwork. He'll he'll be like, okay, so there's this scene where this character does this and this. One. I don't do that. I just talk about what the the specific stuff. So if you haven't watched the movie and if you if some of this if you're having trouble remembering, 
I'm sorry, this is not how I make videos. I'm, I'm not good at that. Yeah, so without the end credits, the movie is two hours and 50 minutes and probably full three hours, but I have to admit, I, I forgot. I usually do note when what time it is when the end credits end on these, but it is, you, you know, it's not something that was hugely disappointing to me, but it was a little surprising. I hadn't read beforehand, but there is no, there's no mid-credit scene, there's no post-credit scene. The only thing there is, yeah, let me, yeah, I, I can, I might as well do that here. The, you know, so, something that is, you know, throughout the end, no, not the entire end credits, but there are these little bits where it'll put the character's name and you'll, I think you see the corresponding character, but I didn't pay close attention to that. And the actor will have put their signature, and that's, that's well, that was a nice little. But yeah, no mid credit scene, no post credit scene. But I can't help but think the thing there is. It's it's basically it's just the the screen is black, but you do hear. It sounds like maybe a blacksmith ham you know hammers a piece of metal three times and then nothing. And I'm sorry, that was definitely not sound. That that wasn't like a piece of music or something. No. Maybe it means nothing, but I definitely did hear that, and yeah. So, the... Right. Yeah, and this is also... This is also from the end, I, you know, Sam becomes the next Captain America, and it was like, you know, people were saying, is it gonna be Bucky, or is it gonna be Sam? And, you know, I watched it with a friend, and he was like, well, it would maybe make more sense for it to be Bucky, because Bucky does have the superhuman you know, speed and, and strength and such. Sam is a guy with wings, guns, you know, the, the drone, and, and now the shield. It's not as... Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a contract thing. I mean, technically, both of them have been in equally many movies. Both of them are in Avengers 3 and 4. Uh, both... Give me a second. Captain America 2 and 3. Bucky is in Captain America 1. Sam isn't. Sam is in Avengers 2. Bucky isn't. So they've been in equally many. I, I don't know. Maybe it's gonna be a th I, I would like it to be like a buddy cop kind of thing where both of them are working. It's just that maybe like Sam's the point man and which means that after you know in the first game he won't have a voice or a name or a face. Three games in he's gonna get a face but still no voice and Bucky is like maybe a backup or you know some, some kind of you know and and they could bicker because both of them feel like they're the better friend to Steve than the other one you know it's like well I knew him for longer yeah well I never tried to kill him and on and on let's see let's see. right the the Yeah, you know, we see there, there at the very end that Cap, he did return through the time, but it was, you know, he, it was only when he became very old, he lived a full life with Peggy, and, yeah, and and at this point I'm gonna go ahead and just the, the oh, I did put it here, yeah, the very first, sorry, the very last thing you see of the very first movie that Captain America is in is I Had a Date. The very last thing you see of what appears to be Chris Evans' last Captain America movie. I was, I'm trying to, you know, just in case in the future something changes, is that they do get that dance. And I, I really, I think that's absolutely perfect. And in fact, I believe it's the last image of the entire film is them dancing. And I really think that's a, a perfect... You know, the, the Tony is the one who sacrificed himself. You know, everyone was like, you know, everyone had a theory. You know, it's going to be either of those because both of them are leaving. So, the the although, you know, some, some said that it would be on Vormir that one of the two would sacrifice themselves. And that turned out to be Nat, which I guess means that the Black Widow movie, you know, and talked to my friend about it. He, he was like, the most interesting would probably place 
chronologically for a Black Widow movie, solo movie, would probably be before Avengers 1. And, you know, her and Hawkeye, yeah, I, th I think that, yeah, that, that is probably the, the most, let's see, and, you know, so, so yeah, this is the last time we see her in present day, you might say, and this will be the, the yeah, this, that, that's the last thing she does is sacrifice herself, you know, to clear the, you know, to clear the red in her ledger. That is the, the only way. And let's see. But yeah, here we, from here on out, should be chronologically the, the yeah, this is the very first thing that I noted about the movie itself rather than when it started. <sighs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Got still some back issues. It helps. So the, the, yeah, very first thing we see, Barton with this teen girl, and it, it appears to be, yeah, he, he calls her Lila. I think, did we hear him specifically call one of the others Lila? I don't remember for sure. Yeah, the, the, though I might have noted. Anyway, yeah, you know, and he's, he's helping her, you know, with the aim, and then we, and it cuts, and we briefly see the, their, their feet, and we see he's got the ankle bracelet, which immediately tells us, okay, so this is happening during Civil War, it was, it, sorry, Infinity War, and we, you know, we immediately know we're gonna, we're about to see the family dusted, you know, we're, we're not stupid, we, and, and that was, a lot of people figured that, just from seeing that bit in the trailer, him, you know, teaching a, a teenage girl how to shoot and he even calls her Hawkeye you know he says ah good good shot Hawkeye and you know they're they're dusted and he didn't see it he you know he he goes over and picks the the air out and when he turns you know the camera shows we see the little bit of dust left but he doesn't know he, he might see the dust but he doesn't know what that means. We, the audience, know exactly what that means. It's been burnt into our retinas forever from Infinity War. So immediately we know she's gone and the rest, the, and, and we, yeah, the rest of the family's probably gone. And he's like, Lila, Lila, and boys, I just, yeah, that, man, the, the, if, if the Russo brothers ever move completely away from making movies, I think they should become, I think it has a word, but I forget, heart doctors. Because they have laser sharp focus when they go directly for your heart. It's it's unreal. It just, like, you know, oh, you could, you could open the, it seems as though the movie is opening on something sweet. It's like they're discussing, you know, mustard. Who puts mayo on hot dog? I found it, your brothers. And then just, you know, reaches in and just, yeah. And I really appreciate that just in general, like the first 20 minutes or half hour of this movie are just the, the it, it really setting in just how much they lost, how badly the Avengers lost in Avengers 3. And yeah, I, we've never really seen you know, a movie that just, that picks up after some such a huge loss for for heroes. You know, it's it's not it's, there. There are stories in comics that do that, but we've never seen it in a movie. And that's it was, yeah, props to Kevin Feige. He keeps coming up with new things that are super cool to see from comics to to you know comic book movie adaptations. Just. I mean, we, there, there have been live-action movie, you know, movie and TV adaptations of comic books since uh, the 70s. Oh, wow. Sorry. Way, way, way longer ago. 40s, maybe? Wasn't, wasn't that when they were making those early Batman and Robin ones? Was that 40s, 30s? I don't know. It's been a while. And he's, you know, he's watched them all and he's like, well, I like him, but let's see. There's this... Here's a list of things that I love in comics that we've never seen in comic book movies. 
and we have this somber music over the opening logo. I'm just briefly gonna say I, I'm really glad that we did get one last Stanley cameo. You know, I, I was like, did they film it? Because they filmed the one for Captain Marvel before he died, and they filmed this before they filmed Captain Marvel. So, you know, it's like, did they film for both of Infinity War and Endgame, or did they only think to film, you know, of course they thought, it's, they're, 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 it's, it's unreal how much they've planned this. The, the Russos, Kevin Feige, I just, if, I, they're probably not watching, but if they are, it's, this is amazing. You did an amazing job. I, when I watched Iron Man, one in theaters in 2008 and Nick Fury walked out and said I'd like to talk to you about the Avenger initiative I I had no idea it would get this amazing and we would we we have Avengers traveling to other planets traveling through time and revisiting parts of of the time that that's something I also really appreciate for the first for, there's like a chunk of this movie where it looks as though we're not going to see any time period we haven't already seen. We're only going to be revisiting... Only. We're going to be revisiting... Oh, wow. Whoops. Yeah, probably. I'm not sure it matters to anyone else, but there it is. The spoiler. I meant to put that up right after I said the opening thing, but then I completely forgot. The... the I... I... Yeah. Right. Visiting different time periods, we get to see the 1970s, which is not something, you know, not, none of the movies are set there. We get to see Hank Pym in the 1970s. He, he was always a snarky a-hole. It's like, you know, ah, so we're, you know, I'm, I'm calling with a package. I'm not sure I can get it to you. Really? Because I feel like that's what we pay you guys for? Wow. I love this Hank Pym. I love him so dearly, and I really hope that they keep bringing back... Michael Douglas, I want to say, as many times as they have good material for him because he is so funny. The the and and we get to see the the I the the fact that Tony got to talk to his father and Thor to his mother, you know, and and you know, Nebula of I guess 2022. I I think I read somewhere that. Like the official timeline that actually Infinity War took place in 2017, not 2018. I'm, so I'm going to go with that. So, you know, that happened in 2017. And the five years later part of this movie, which, yeah, most of the movie, is in 20, 2022. The, the right, you know, the, the yeah, 2022 Nebula trying to, to reason with 2014 Nebula... And, and I love the bit where, you know, 2014 Nebula, she doesn't, she's, you know, she might as well be looking at her own reflection. She says, you disgust me, you know, because there is, there, she, she hates herself probably more than even Thanos, or at least at that point when she's still serving Thanos, she, yeah, let's see, and, you know, Tony and Nebula, Nebula? Sorry. Clearly I can say it. I was saying it properly just now. Anyway, yeah, it's because there's a P coming up. Play. A, I don't know what it's called, but it's like they've got these little triangles and they like do this. And I thought it was such a, you know, and this is like, yeah, like the, the, Tony was, you know, he, he was the, the, one of the first things we see of Tony Stark in this franchise is he's stuck in this cave and he, yeah, he has to pass the time and now we see him stuck in this, you know, spaceship and he has to pass the time. So, yeah, we see, and, and Nebula is like, at first she's, she's a little bit of, you know, she, she, she's like, ah, oh, I lost, I can't believe I lost, you know, and, and he's like, okay, okay, come now. And he's like, oh, yeah, you won. And, and she's like, just, you know, I won. I'm 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 good at something, you know. And the the you know she's still she she's having a little trouble socializing socializing with him. But he's also someone who you know he's he's socialized with some really nasty types. So 
is it like like uh, Peter would probably freak out, you know, if if Nebula came close to him and was like, come on, do this, you know, he, yeah. I just, I'm sorry, that that sounds really. I love Peter Parker. He's you know, Peter Parker's Spider Man is is why I started reading comics at all. Now, and Tony starts recording the message for Pepper. I think they did that brilliantly. That like. Here at the start of the movie, we have this setup of maybe he won't make it. And, you know, I'm sorry, I think I'm gonna. This is gonna shake the camera. So, like, yeah, it's not very comfortable if you're looking. So, maybe look away and I'll say when to look back. Yeah, now you can look back. Yeah, that's better. Now I can stretch my legs. There we go. The, the, right, yeah, Tony records this message and it's like, maybe he won't make it back. And then, you know, he gets rescued. And then at the end, we hear this message and i is it maybe that there at the end, we hear more than, we hear both messages because, you know, a little bit into the message we hear at the end or the messages, he says, the time jump tomorrow. So clearly he recorded this before, you know, the, the, excuse me, the start of the movie cues you up. You expect Tony might not make it, and he's leaving a message for Pepper. And, you know, there at the end, she's not the only one listening. And, yeah, the, the, so that's, that's like, that's, that's primed in, in your mind at the start of the movie. And so when it, the end of the movie comes around, you know, it's, you, you haven't been sitting there like, I bet there's, you know, you know, no, but it's just when it happens, it like flips that switch back on. It's like, oh, right. The, the, yeah. And I, I think they did a brilliant job of that, too. You know, similar to how the Civil War opens with the, the crash of a car and ends with us finding out who was in that car. And, you know, the, the audience and, and the first thing we see of Tony in that movie is him talking about, well, I never saw my parents after that. They, they died in a car accident. And then there at the end, we see him seeing them being murdered after the car accident, you know. I really, I, I don't know. I can understand if the Russo brothers feel like, okay, this, you know, this was, this was super intense, but we got it. We got to take a little bit of a break. This is a lot of big movies to produce in a fairly short amount of time. Let's, let's, you know, I, I could totally understand that. But if they want to stay in the MCU, I really, I, I love their work. Their work is some of the best of the MCU. And I, I do maintain that Joss Whedon's also remains some of the best of the MCU. But, yeah, ultimately, I do think the, the Russos are, are better. I, f I forget exactly who it was that said, maybe it was a midnight screening or something. Someone... Yeah. Possibly someone who, you know, from, from my channel awesome or something. I, I don't watch very many of them anymore. But anyway, the, the, yeah. One of them said, Joss Whedon writes Joss Whedon characters, you know. So he, I think some of the time he did capture their voices, but the Russo brothers do it consistently. And, and, you know, Tony is like, I, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, if you see this, maybe I'm no longer alive. Maybe you're not even, God, I hope you're, you know, just this, this, for, for a second, he's like, oh, God, Pepper might over, Pepper might be dust. For all I know, Pepper is dust. And just, yeah. And, and the, I forget exactly what it is he says, but he he talks about, you know, on, when recording the message, he talks about Nebula, who obviously is, she can't hear him or she would probably, you know, not be okay with, but he, he refers to her as the, the blue meanie, which I thought was a cute one. And I don't know, I guess the, the subtitle people were like, no one around here knows the Beatles, which, okay, but whatever. So it was translated into, I think, handyman smurf or something like that uh, which is which i will grant more people are you know more of the young people in the audience are going to get that but it does make sense for tony to make a beatles reference you know he's 
He's not old, and the Beatles aren't old, but they're not young. And that's... that's I don't know, let's go with that. And, and the, the, you know, Tony, like, handing the, the last... It's, it's not quite clear if it's food or drink. It, it looks like he drinks it when he's, you know, offering that to Nebula, and she pushes it back to him, and, okay, so... I I thought that was that was really sweet. The the you know the the Nebula, she's shown to be so ruthless so many times and so much of her screen time, such a such an incredibly brutal and angry person, and to see her have these little because yeah it's like you know she. She likes him. She has some respect for him. You know, they they did fight alongside each other. You know, if if not for terribly long against Thanos and yeah, just the the I th I thought that was, that was a really great. I this is this is the best character exploration of so many of these characters of any of the movies. I I really think they they. I mean that's and that's that's the thing that people always say and I don't necessarily entirely disagree the Avengers movies don't get very much you know character exploration of the individuals and and such and yeah I I mean I guess if, yeah if if one had to be completely like ruthlessly blunt Ultimately, the Gar both Guardians of the Galaxy movies do more character exploration than at least the first Avengers movie. I, I, I maintain the second one does an amazing job of character exploration. It, you know, anyway, but the, the third one doesn't have, you know, Avengers 3, it's especially the, the you know, the closer to that, you know, you know that thing of like when you read the news, it's like if it happened in your backyard, you're like, oh wow, that really. If it happened like thousands of miles away, you're less interested. The closer to Thanos any character is in in the Avengers three, the more you know compelling stuff and the more exploration they get. You know, so Thanos, Nebula, Gamora, Star Lord, Tony, because he's been obsessed with Thanos since 2012. Let's see. Yeah, and I hear I wrote that we were going to feel the impact of the fact that the heroes lost Infinity War and how badly they lost. And, you know, Tony drifting off and, and Nebula, you know, she's clearly sad and she, she sits him up in, in the pilot's seat. And, let's see. Right, and, and yeah, for and, and like for a couple of seconds you, you really you sit there and you're like I can't believe it, I'm watching Tony Stark die. I, I, it can't end like this. And then like some some light and at first it's just like it's it's just a little bit, you know, and, and it starts, you know, and it gets brighter and brighter and he's like, mm. and then he looks and, and you know, the audience immediately knows, you know, and it, and, and there were a lot, you know, people theorize. Captain Marvel is going to be the one who rescues Tony, you know, but, and, you know, and, and the, yeah, we, we see her and, you know, she's like smiling and I know that it's not necessarily as much of a rush, but I do feel like she's just a tiny bit doing that, you know, people talk about how in, in Batman v Superman, when Superman's rescuing, like, f flood victims, I want to say it is, that he's just, like, you know, flying there above them all and just, you know, like, the camera turns all the way around and we see people move. Yes, I realize it's slow motion, but he's still just posing for, like, maybe 30 seconds without doing anything. Even with the, the slow-mo, he's still... He's, we're not seeing him move slowly. We're seeing him hover. And Captain Marvel does do that a little bit, but it's it's still like a, yeah, you know, actually does. 
No, no, she, she would have had to do it for at least a few seconds before she started helping. But again, it's, it's much less of a rush because she's, you know, he's, he's not, if he had lost consciousness and they couldn't get him awake, then it would be insane. But he's still, like, he opens his eyes and he can move and, you know. But, yeah, that was, that was a really awesome. That's, that's her reintroduction to this kind of, you know, the, the MCU at large. That's, that's how they, you know. I was a little surprised that we didn't see, you know, the post credit scene of Captain Marvel didn't actually appear in this. We just see after she arrived. But, I mean, it's a long movie with a lot of stuff. I'm... I don't think they should have cut anything. I, I am incredibly happy with all the stuff they, they didn't cut. And, I mean, you know, if you didn't watch Captain Marvel and you do watch this, it's not like, you know, the, the, it just shows that she arrives. It's not like it's some completely, like, like if you watch this and you haven't watched Infinity War, then you're in trouble. Now... And and I like you know you see Cap standing there and you know and yeah and, and the the whole his whole beard is gone so yeah he's he's just doing the the last level of the of the shaving but the you know the the mirror starts shaking and he's like what happened and then we see that it's you know Captain Marvel literally just pushing see that's who this is why she doesn't she, she this is why she says only use my pager in an emergency because she knows if she lets people they're gonna beep her they're gonna page her is it called a beeper also i don't know every single time their car won't start and just like, just just a little just a little jump start you know and Yeah, and, and, you know, Tony comes out and he says, I couldn't stop him. And Steve says, you know, neither could I. We lost. And Rocket and Nebula hold hands. And this is, you know, yeah, they, they're, they're the only two surviving Guardians. And they might not have been, like, the biggest you know, the best of friends before, but they both really cared. If, if, if they didn't necessarily care that much about the, each other, they definitely did both care about Gamora and, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that it's possible that Nebula didn't spend that much time caring about the other, you know, yeah. But she she cared about Gamora, and so did Rocket. Yeah, he he, you know, yeah. Again, for those who don't, yeah, I forgot to say that. But I'm I'm gonna be spoiling this entire franchise. I'm, I'm gonna try not to spoil any other franchise, but I'm just spoiling this entire franchise. The end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. You know, this is why it's it's good to re it's, you know, if you can rewatch close to. He specifically he you know Gamora is about to go and and save Quill, and. The, the, yeah, Rocket zaps her and says, I can't afford to lose two friends today. So, yeah, he, he did, he cared so much about Gamora that he, yeah. Let's see. And, you know, Black Widow explains, you know, the world governments are in pieces, but the ones that are still back have, you know, done a census, and it appears that Thanos did exactly what he was, what he said he was going to do. He eliminated 50% of all living beings. And and the first time Rocket speaks in when when Tony's in the room, you know, I, f I forget exactly what it is that that Oh yeah, yeah, I think it's it's is it maybe the the thing about that Thor lost that and all the anyway, you know, Rocket says, you know, one thing and Tony's like up to this exact moment, I thought you were a builder bear. And he's like, what's, what's going on with him? And Thor's sitting there like, he lost. I mean, there's a lot of that going around. But... And I, I really think that they did an incredible job on, with, with Thor. In the, I, 
I didn't love what how they changed him in Ragnarok, but I love this new dimension of him. The the Thor that knew that it was all riding on him and he failed. That that was really, really compelling. And the and I actually I'm a lot more comfortable with this version of Funny Thor than the Ragnarok version of Funny Thor, because I really I've already talked about that elsewhere. Anyway, the the yeah, I believe in the Ragnarok video. I, I talk about why I d dislike that. I'm not saying it's not still. It's it's a great. I love. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, the the it's still a great movie. I, I realize it's not for everyone, and it's not my personal favorite on the MCU, but it is, and and it does do some interesting things. And I'm really glad that we got to see more of Korg, Meek, and Valkyrie in this. The. Come to think of it, were Korg and Meek in the climax? Valkyrie was. I'm not 100% sure about Korg and Meek. They, they might have been like the only Marvel, the only MCU characters who could fight that, that didn't appear in, in the climax. But anyway, the, the, let's see. The, yeah, yeah, the, I'm really glad that the trailers and TV spots did not give away Thor and let's see you know his his entire new look and persona professor hulk you know it was leaked via toys but other things have been have appeared to be leaked through toys and then weren't you know the the people thought that maybe thor would use the the tesseract in as as a you know thing because of a lego set in in ragnarok which you know he never touches it in that entire movie, the yeah, so so, right on to the next note, you know, yeah, you know, I th yeah, I think Cap is the one who says, you know, Tony, we need you, and and Tony's like, well, I needed you, past tense. I said we need a suit of armor around the world, and the you know, and and. You know, and and I said we'll lose, and you said we'll do that together too. But where was the together? You you know, we lost, and you weren't there. And you know that is something that they also talk about that in like a TV spot or something. I think Kevin Feige maybe talks about that they lost specifically because, or in part because the Avengers were not a you know a unit anymore. And. And let's see. Ah, crap! I don't know what this one. I get not for you, Cap. I yeah. I I don't know. Sometimes my short hand is too short. But yeah, he you know he puts. Yeah, maybe he's. Yeah. The, the you know and and uh, yeah he puts on the the nano housing thing on on Steve's chest and then he says you know go go hide you know and I, I don't think he actually said it but you know the the subtext is that's what you do now isn't it and I I really I appreciate that they yeah you know I didn't love in Infinity War when. Rhodey is like, oh guys, come on in, and you know he's like, oh, that's that's a that's a court martial, you know, and just welcome back, come back inside Avengers headquarters, guys. There's no, you know, I don't. I was never, I didn't feel like it was a huge problem, but I did feel like, it was like ah, it? but this one actually does say, you know, yeah, well, Tony isn't complete, just completely cool with, with Steve now. You know, it is, they, they did actually, the, the, what's it called? Yeah, that, that split is actually, and, and I do think that the, yeah, I mean, they they didn't end up talking specifics about Sokovia, and I, it's possible that there were a couple more lines, and they just felt like the movie's getting too long, guys. 
I feel like, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not that they end up agreeing more with the other side of the issue. It's that they both, they trust the other and they, excuse me, excuse me. And at the end of the day, they did fight alongside each other. So, yeah. And let's see. And, and, you know, Captain Marvel, I love how just completely, she is so confident in this movie. Like, this is going to happen without me saying it. This is not, this is not me telling other people what they should do. This is me saying, this is me predicting what's going to happen. Young women are going to, like, put, like, like, make stickers of the things that, the, the, the yeah. Yeah, basically the, the Captain, maybe not Captain Marvel's exact lines since they're very specific to this movie, but just the, the, the sum it up as a, just like she literally says, well, he, you know, he snapped his fingers, we find him, we kill him, we, you know, we snap, we bring everybody back. Just the, the, you know, yeah, and, and.